We all know the basic story of Nokia. They were kings of the mobile game from pretty much the start of consumer mobiles in the 90s, right up until Apple rugby tackled them, and then held them down while Android repeatedly kicked them in the face. The corpse of the phone division was eventually sold to Microsoft, where it was used in one of the repeated attempts to make Fetch, I mean Windows Phone, happen. The remaining company bided their time until they were allowed to make phones again, and now make pleasant but entirely generic cheap Android sets. But did it have to be that way? Why didn't Nokia see the revolution coming? Why did they instead bet on a series of ideas of various levels of merit and forethought, but either never really developed them, such as with the communicator, or didn't think them through in the slightest, such as the N-Gage. Right back in the year 2000, Nokia's engineers and marketing teams made a video called One Day, about the stories of a day in the life of 13 people and how they use, and might in the future use, their mobile phone. That entire 14 minute video is at the end of this one, encoded as well as I can for posterity. But we'll take a quick look at some of the highlights first. There's also some application demos of how Nokia think they'll solve some of these problems, and a video of some talking heads accidentally having insight. These two I'll post separately on the channel without pushing them to subs. So for context, what was Nokia's big phone at the time they made this video? Well it was this, the Nokia 7110. We all wanted this thing, made famous as it was by the film The Matrix, where it looked impossibly futuristic with its slide cover and cool stubby aerial. Side note though, Despite this, the 7110 isn't in The Matrix. It wasn't ready in time. The phones in the movie are this, the earlier 8110 butchered to feature the spring-loaded cover from the 7110. It launched to humans in October 1999, so this, if you'd upgraded from the various iterations of the 3110 style chassis, is what you had. It was Nokia's first phone with a browser of any type, albeit a text-only affair that only showed pages specifically made for it. Slowly. It doesn't even support GPRS, the precursor to 3G. So it's worth remembering when we judge the one day video, that it's coming from a world where colour mobile screens didn't exist. Where messaging is 160 characters of text that'll cost you 10p a time. And where, with this and the near simultaneously launched 3210, Nokia had just invented T9 predictive text. So what did they get right? Well, the first guy, a courier, an aspiring music industry abuse victim, wants the ability to listen to his own music while out and about. Win there. He also wants to be able to, as he incorrectly puts it, download his own music to industry A&R bots. Insurance woman wants her calendar always synced. She wants financial information online. She wants to be able to send photos. Or wins, certainly. This surfer dude claims to be a stockbroker. Okay, bruh. His big concern is to be in touch everywhere, but he also wants to be able to trade and work from home using his mobile. Yeah? The restaurant owner has one of the better visions. She wants communication with suppliers via SMS to include pictures. So far, so everyone. But she talks about the phone ultimately being one tool for everything. Music, communication, video. She's dead on. Nokia probably should have hired her. More than anyone, she gets what we all know the phone as today in 2020. The saxophone guy isn't so far off either. He nails that as a gig worker, before that just meant you cycled too fast on pavements in order to get someone their pizza, he needs to be constantly contactable, and makes the very sensible prediction that as he travels to unfamiliar places, the phone could act as a tourist guide too, essentially predicting apps like City Mapper. Football Woman talks about getting news from Europe so she can get results from leagues she's surprisingly good at pronouncing for an American. She repeats a lot of the things others have said, but I caught something that to my knowledge the original Nokia never implemented, and she doesn't even really mention. Taking a panoramic photo of a location, in this case, a football stadium. Apple at least were watching. The electronic engineering student is all about games. Of course he is, giving us a look at Snake. He talks about playing games online with friends, good call, but he also talks about watching live football matches on his phone. A long way off with the 7110, but absolutely reality now. Sewing Woman has been rather upstaged by the restaurant owner and says a lot of similar things. Although she does charmingly refer to the phone as her little friend. She also predicts doing her banking by phone. The biker wants his phone to sync with his PC and essentially invents click and collect when he talks about ordering online. 
Boom Woman talks about the phone as an organisational device, but you forget all that when it turns out her second biggest wish is a video camera on something small enough to fling yourself out of a plane with. Certainly something we can do now. You first. Like all of them, this family guy wants photos and video. But he talks about online games just as Electronics Dude did. He even muses about games being something he could enter tournaments in. With prizes. Yes, the man predicted esports. Right now on my phone I could download Gear Club and enter the first round of World's Fastest Gamer, a competition that in previous years has been fully supported by the McLaren F1 team. Of course, as I write this, we're all under Covid lockdown and esports are bigger than our sports. I hope this guy's happy. He doesn't quite nail it though. He also thinks that phones will keep getting smaller. Given that Apple's biggest phones now rival their smallest iPads, that one's a miss. Two left. The tourist guide woman doesn't realise hers is absolutely one of the jobs the phone will eventually marginalise, but at least she's got the TV set in her hand she asks for. She also wants the phone to be her PC but mobile, which, yeah, pretty much spot on. And finally, Big Family Guy lives a long way from said Big Family for some reason. So again, photos and videos of his grandkids is what he wants. Speaking of Covid lockdown, the concept of photos and videos of grandkids is rather timely for us to rewatch. Given that for many, including my own parents, photos of their grandkids is rather all they have right now. It's also a huge reason why people use their phones. Again though, it's 2000, and he talks about showing people through video how he takes care of his horses and dogs. Yeah. We're six years ahead of the invention of YouTube, and this guy just beat them all to it. If his name turns out to be Giuseppe Musk, I'm going to start looking suspicious. Between this and stealing hyperlooping from a dreadful FMV game he worked on, I'm starting to think Elon Musk isn't the stable genius he's made out to be. Nonetheless, this dude has a good vision, talking about his newspapers being online and only slightly giving himself away by mentioning faxes. I see why they put him last. As I said, the DVD contains two more interesting segments. The app demos thing shows Nokia had the concept of apps nailed in 2000, even if the capability wasn't there. Given it was mostly the app store rather than the phone itself that really drove the adoption of iPhones, this was a big later miss for Nokia and their S40 and later S60 OSs. The start of this segment is using what was then current tech. They talk about the current messaging platform and the planned addition of pictures, sounds and videos to it. I'm not sure if Nokia ever really did that before Microsoft bought their corpse, but he's absolutely just described iMessage from Apple. And indeed the mobile phone agnostic WhatsApp, which was still nine years away. That said, they also tell you to check out the latest Hendrix album at your local record shop, which suggests the lack of Wikipedia prevented them from looking up the alive status of Jimmy, and a failure to predict just how much the music on the phone they've been banging on about would impact said shops. We switch to a vision of a future phone, and it's not bad for a concept. If we ignore the truly weird shape of that screen and the unusable multi-sized buttons without letters on them. To be fair, seeing universal touchscreens coming is an understandable miss. Blackberry still didn't see them coming when the iPhone had been on the market for a decade. Multimedia messaging features, of course. But one of the tiny little things they predict and don't know it is Apple Pay, talking about storing your credit card details on the phone for use in purchases. They also nail music streaming, but forgot to ever do anything about it. This paragraph being particularly revealing. Having personalized access to music as and when it becomes available is going to have a major impact on our music consumption. And finally another thing they were slow on. As an afterthought, they talked about how your phone could tell you the best way to get to the restaurant you booked. Of course, you idiots. SatNav is going to be a huge thing. How did you not make the last leap there? Google certainly got it. I never get in my car without Waze, a Google product, running. The final talking head section is lengthy and, well, talking headsy. They make some damn good points to be fair, many of which Nokia would then completely ignore. It'll be uploaded and on the end card after the main feature. There's a couple of things to point out that don't appear elsewhere though. Very early in the first section, a woman uses a phone with a touchscreen. Yeah, she's using a stylus, but it proves that even when launching the 3210, Someone in Nokia knew where things were going. The second guy lists in amazement some stuff already being achieved with mobiles. It's absolutely daily stuff now, so it's quite funny to hear someone talking about it with enthusiasm as the future now. Well, as much enthusiasm as the world's most monotone human being can manage anyway. 
current environment, there are lots of services that show little hints of what will be coming in the future. For example, in Holland, it's possible to pay your parking ticket with your mobile phone. In Austria, you can pay your train ticket with a web phone and show the actual ticket on your mobile phone to the conductor, so you don't actually have any, any piece of paper. A Swiss airport. This UK guy is generally smart, but unfortunately predicts the future by saying 3G won't fail, but some of the players will. Then again, he also says, uh, But the market as a whole will not fail. Too much is invested. The one player I can certainly be confident about uh, in the equipment side, particularly in handsets, is Nokia. It's got the critical mass, which means that it is going to be one of the long-term winners. This guy points out business is 20% of users, but 50% of revenue. The business market, he says, is saturated and the growth will be in consumer. Yep, well done there. Morgan Stanley woman is surprised people didn't talk more about location services. She's nailed it. Morgan Stanley man identifies Microsoft as a future competitor. Well, technically no, it's difficult to compete with the company that owns you. The big reveal though is this full screen colour smartphone no one has mentioned elsewhere in the video. It's even got the pop-up camera some Android sets are now getting. Nokia never made anything like this in their original incarnation. Why? What we have here is an iPhone eight years before the iPhone. It then appears constantly throughout the whole video, including shots of full screen maps and video calling. I'm sure technology couldn't quite have made this real, but instead of anything remotely like this, Nokia made the fricking N-Gage and responded directly to the first iPhone with whatever the hell this is. A later shot reveals dates from 2003 in the email. If they'd somehow managed that, we'd now be saying, Apple who? And that's the real story of Nokia. Just like so many big market leaders, they thought they knew what customers wanted, or worse, that customers would just accept what they wanted, because they were the market leader. And that's always death, evolve or die. For Apple, of course, the iPhone was that evolution for a company that only a few years before was still Apple Computer, and resorting to having Microsoft buy a section of the company just to help them survive. Now, of course, Apple at the Nokia. Will I find a long forgotten Apple Blu ray in 2040 that showed they'd nailed the transition to neural implants and then did nothing about it? Who knows? But hopefully they're mindful of this in a way Nokia weren't, because they were too arrogant or just too stupid to. In the meantime, I'll leave you with the full uncut version of One Day, and the other two videos will be linked. Enjoy! My real passion is music. Jimi Hendrix is my hero. I love all guitar-based bands. I do courier work in order to give me time to play my own music and to tout it around to A&R companies. If, for example, there's a band that I want to go and hear and I know they're in town, I can use my white phone to reserve tickets immediately. It saves curing. You know, riding around here and one minute there was nothing and the next minute there's this. It's amazing, it just shows you how quickly technology is moving. It'd be brilliant to be able to play my music anywhere I want to and record it onto the phone and then download it onto the web so that I have access to worldwide A&R companies. It's going to save so much time and it's going to make everything so much faster and hopefully get me a record deal. I see the future as... I can't, I can't wait for the future. Our company's business is insurance. If my boss wants to have some meeting, I will input this information into the mobile phone because it has the calendars function. The competition in the insurance market is very strong, so every insurance company, they want to know the updated financial information. If the mobile phone in the future can select updated financial information and print it locally, this is important for our business. My boyfriend is in America. If the mobile phone has the camera function, I can take the picture and send this to him. In my heart, I think future should be beautiful. Communication will help you to realize your dream.
Surfing is my passion. Surfing is what I enjoy to do. You never know when the surf's gonna be good, and when it's good, I wanna be there. I'm a stockbroker. I go to work and I take care of business, and as soon as possible, I get out to the surf. I need to have coverage constantly. I can't be traveling and say for three days not know what's going on. I, I need something that's reliable. I mean, making life easier is a beautiful thing, and that's what the mobile phone is basically doing. It's, it's giving me freedom. You know, I have freedom to be on the beach doing what I love to do and making a living at the same time. To have the ability to actually trade with something that small, that's a huge bonus. It cuts out going back to the city. It cuts out going back in and, and dealing with, with the rat race. Every once in a while, you'll get a picture from me saying, here's what it's like when you're sipping on your martini and trading your stock and watching the beautiful surf roll off, wherever I decide and wherever is paradise for me at that time. Tino and I have been running this restaurant for several years now. It's a family business. I send text messages to all my friends all the time. Um, text messages to suppliers so they don't get my supplies wrong. You know, it's part of my life. It's very good if I could actually see advertisements from my suppliers saying we actually have really good, a good catch, you know, if it's a special offer or something. I think it will be great to be able to communicate to specific target markets to be able to let your customers see and know what your restaurant is really all about. Well, I have big dreams for the restaurant and having a phone which is going to be able to do so many things, just one tool which is going to be part of my music, my organizer, be able to take short video clips and stuff like that, that would be so cool. Wow, the saxophone is like a, the human voice. It's like for me, it's so natural to play this instrument. It's the instrument that, that helps me to express what I want to express. I do a lot of traveling, especially in the summer when you go playing from town to town. Nowadays, if you don't have a mobile phone, you're lost. If you need a sax player, you call. If you find him, good. If you don't, then you hire another one. When I have a night off, what I like to do is, you know, going out with my girlfriend. I think in the future, if I have a gig in London, I can check out the places to go there, and the restaurants, and, you know, look at the city map, everything by the phone. Usually as, as a guide, you know, make my life easier. I hope my future is playing around the world, with playing with real good musicians and making my own music and also having love, having friends, you know, being happy. My love affair of soccer started at three and a half years old. I wanted a soccer ball. It can be a very lonely life at times. You're out running 6 a.m. in the morning to get your, your mileage in so you're fit for practice. The way I use my mobile phone now is actually to keep in touch with friends, also to keep in touch with people that I work with when I coach. If I can't get a hold of somebody, it's nice to know that I can text message because then I know that straight away they've seen a message and, and an idea that I need them to, to have instead of having to worry about their voicemail or to page me back. That, that just takes too long. In America, it's very, very difficult to get European news. So what we're tremendous about is that I can get the latest sports scores in the Italian league, in the Bundesliga. I could use the camera for showing my latest goal, showing the beautiful stadiums I'll be playing in. Basically, just bringing the world to me and my family and to the people I love the most. Winning's always nice, but playing the game well is, is, is most important. I'm a university student. I am majoring in electronic engineering. If I'm uh, in a class and uh, it's not very convenient for me to answer the phone, my buddies can leave a text message. Some mobiles can surf the internet now, but uh, I don't think that's enough. If in the future I can uh, play games uh, online with uh, people all over the world, uh, that's excellent. Football is actually my favorite sport. My team is Lazio. Shanghai is uh, very, very far away from uh, Italy and uh, 
Um, I usually get results of the match uh, through uh, newspaper. If I can get it from my mobile phone, that would be excellent. If there is enough bandwidth, I would like to watch a, a live match through mobile phone. Today, everybody on the street carries a mobile phone, and uh, tomorrow, who knows what a mobile phone will be. I work with my sister, who's taking care of the business part, and I'm doing the creative part. I try to do original things. I use my mobile for everything. I can't live without it. I'm always talking with my sister, always talking with my clients, with the people who provide me the materials. I'm planning to sell out of Spain, maybe in Paris, London. I will need to travel more. It'll be great to send pictures of my work to the stores. Also to have my agenda in there, to know things about my bank. I don't know, like a little friend there who does the work for me and helps me. I travel a lot on my bike and uh, I do need to get in touch with friends and all. Our friends do need to get in touch with me business-wise. I have a little business where I supply sound equipment, lighting equipment. What sort of application should I have on the phone in the future? Definitely telephone, email, sending messages, camera if possible, moving pictures, or if not, at least still pictures, things that a laptop can do. It would be nice to put into a little, little, small, little phone. If my mobile phone can synchronize things together with my PC or a laptop, it would be amazing. Shopping on it? Sure. Anywhere in the world, I can just look up the net, check the nearest store, buy it through the phone. I'm not afraid of the future. I'm looking forward to it, definitely. Looking forward to the future. Time is money in the film industry, and communication is key. I do require unique services, especially on my mobile phone. I'm often in a situation where I need to get a piece of equipment immediately. The clouds are moving in, we don't have enough lights, I need a generator and I need a light. Using a mobile phone, I can do that quickly, efficiently. I look like a star, my crew looks like a star, and the client is happy. Perfect. My passion is skydiving. Specifically, it's a discipline within skydiving that's relatively new, which is called free flying. The equipment must work. You must trust it. You must trust the people who pack your parachutes. You must trust the riggers who pack your reserves. And you must trust yourself. The thought of being able to bring a mobile phone up with me in free fall, to free fly with a mobile phone that had a video camera or a still camera on it, it would be wonderful. I come from a big family. Um, I have three sisters and uh, one brother. Family values are very important in the um, Asian community. The mobile phone binds the family together. As a cab driver, I do have a lot of time by myself waiting for the next passenger to arrive. I think by playing games, time really flies. I hope in the future the mobile industry has more sophisticated games through the internet where I can play online. I think it would be fun if the mobile phone operator organized some kind of awards. With my score, I hope that the, the company itself would give me some cash discount or voucher. I'm looking forward uh, for the changes in the technology in the future so that in my lifetime I get to see more and more new gadgets coming in, smaller handphones, a lot of stuff which could spice up our life. I'm a local guide in Shanghai and English guide. I use my mobile phone today and uh, take messages from friends and speak to my family a lot. I have no time to listen to the music at home. So if I can have a mobile phone just like a radio, I would like it very much. Or maybe mobile phone can be a TV set. If it can be just like my personal computer, I would like it very much. 
If I want to go out to do some shopping, the mobile phone can tell me where I can get this pair of shoes at my favorite clothes. If some advertisement on the mobile phone and can make my be lower and I will use my mobile phone more than none. I will be very excited with mobile phone in the future, I do think so. They have eight children, all they are married and all they have little babies. All my family live very, very far from here, around the world. I need to communicate with them, and they need to communicate with me. Hola, ¿qué tal? I live here, but I never alone. Perhaps in the future, with a camera, I can show how I walk with the horse, or how I I walking with my dogs. To have in, in, in your hands uh, the newspaper, to send a, a fax, or, or to see the, the face of a new baby, <laughs> this is wonderful. With my phone, I have all my family in my hand. This is my knocking. Perfect.